This is a book review of Lean Startup, how today's entrepreneurs use continuous innovation to create radically successful businesses. We are accessory to success and we review a lot of business books here. Uh, we take a lot of tidbits from these books, package them up and send them out in emails that a lot of people like to use on LinkedIn. Uh, curious about what to post there, that might be a solution for you. Feel free to enjoy this book review of Lean Startup. Main takeaway, many organizations approach product development backwards. As a result, they waste a great deal of time, effort, money, and creative potential on products that customers do not actually want. Eric Reese explains how to minimize his waste in clear, easy to understand steps, as well as how to harness scientific reasoning and real customer behavior to snatch success from the jaws of defeat. Using tools like a minimum viable product and effective metrics, harnessing the lean startup methodology will unleash your organization's full potential. What you'll learn. Endlessly planning and perfecting a perfect product before release is not effective in today's quickly changing environment. Instead of a perfect finished product, release a minimum viable product. Innovation accounting and how to measure learning when even while failing. The key to success is minimizing waste, not necessarily by increased efficiency, but by increasing your organization's effectiveness. It is paramount to include real customers as soon as possible in the product development process. Pivoting is not failure. It is tailoring your organization's product to the needs of customers have. Ensure you are measuring your organization's productivity effectively instead of relying on vanity metrics. Soften testing cycles as much as possible with equal attention to building, measuring, and learning. Base decisions off empirical data instead of intuition or persuasive arguments. The best ways to implement lean startup principles at an organization. Main book summary. The lean startup opens by defining a startup as an organization creating goods or services in unpredictable conditions. Then Reese launches into an enthralling anecdote regarding the importance of working effectively. It is important to create a product that real customers need instead of working efficiently to create a product that customers do not need and will not buy. That does not mean hiding behind the whiteboard in perfection analysis or releasing a product without research to see what happens. While market research is valuable, it is important to remember that customers often do not know exactly what they want until they are using it. Instead of falling into an endless cycle of market research or releasing a product with no market research, startups should launch a minimum viable product. The minimum viable product is a, par a pared down product that offers the bare minimum to the customer. Often the first customer who's are, who are willing to use and offer feedback on the minimum viable product are known as early adopters. Then customer's behavior can be observed and your organization can unlock what customers want and will pay for. Another great book on this topic is Ready, Fire, Aim. Which features are most important for your minimum viable product? Rice explains in a clear, easy to understand way that this cycle starts with quantifying your hypothesis. Then beginning with the riskiest, empirically test them via your minimum viable product. This way real customer behavior drives which features receive precious resources and can help you figure out which problems your customers really have. Of course, this will also include some negative feedback. However, responding to and resolving the issues will help your organization create a product that best meets your customers' needs. As your organization releases a minimum viable product and performs experiments, you can tune the engine and observe how customer behavior changes. Developing the right product is challenging, but very important. And we recommend Loon Shots or Innovator's Dilemma to help choose the right kind of innovation you pursue. Right place, right time means nothing. Henry Ford had 500 competitors. Same for Facebook and other college networks whose head start proved irrelevant. If there is no difference in customer behavior, it might be time to consider a pivot. In addition to learning more about your customers and their needs, this approach can help give your organization the tools to determine whether to pivot or to persevere. Although Rice does not tell you which decision to make, he does explain that using scientifically tested data gives you the most possible information to make the decision. 
If you are considering a pivot, we recommend the book Good to Great, so you can learn what a successful pivot does and does not look like. Another big step to operating a lean startup is to make sure your organization is using the right metrics. Instead of relying on ambiguous vanity metrics, it is important to define success on clear metrics that everyone understands. Rice explains how applying actionable, accessible, and auditable metrics can help achieve success. If the right metrics are readily available, then you can use what is described in the messy middle as stand-in metrics. Determining which engine of growth your organization should focus on can change which growth metrics you should be using. For example, sticky growth, which is reliant on repeat customers, should focus on repeat business over new customer growth. Other engines of growth are defined and explained in an easy to follow way. Similar to lean manufacturing, operating a lean startup means working in small batches. Using clear examples from industry leaders like Toyota, Rice shows how operating a small in small batches while seemingly inefficient for an individual contributor are actually more efficient for the organization as a whole. Because this allows for agile problem solving, your organization will be able to react quickly and effectively in an uncertain environment. Another great book about what to focus on in order to succeed is Why Startups Fail. Quality assurance is another key to a successful lean startup. Using Toyota as a guide, the author outlines a modified version of the quality assurance five questions system that you can use to determine the root cause of problems. Although this system is designed only to identify new problems, this quality assurance tool is an excellent way to start building a sustainably lean company. Because not all startups are stereotypical innovators in a garage, the author includes a section on how to implement lean startup strategies in a variety of setups. For governmental agencies to small startups, the scientifically based the theories outlined in the lean startup can be applied to nearly any type of organization. However, this requires cooperation and mutual trust. Because Rice understands this is not always the case, he includes some strategies to help build those muscles. Lean Startup talks about leaps of faith, when founders and leaders must move confidently in one direction, believing that necessary happening will come to fruition. The book Fooled by Randomness calls this cascading miracles. Throughout the Lean Startup, Rice illustrates concepts that real life examples, drawing on the experiences both from his own startup, IMVU, and those he has consulted on, the wealth of actionable knowledge makes it possible to easily visualize the concepts. About the author. After graduating from Yale in 2000, Eric Rice went on to co-found several startups, most notably IMVU. He went on to serve as a consultant for established businesses and startups, as well as working in venture capital. Business Week named him one of the best young entrepreneurs of tech. In 2010, Harvard Business School named Rice Entrepreneur in Residence. After his experience as Chief Technology Officer at IMVU and consulting work, Rice wrote The Lean Startup, which has become translated into 30 languages, spearheaded a global movement, and has revolutionized startup structure. Publications like the Wall Street Journal, Wired, New York Times, Harvard Business Review have featured the strategies discussed in The Lean Startup. In 2015, Rice released a book called The Leader's Way via Kickstarter, which raised over $500,000 and is one of the largest book releases ever funded by Kickstarter. Currently, Rice is an IDEO fellow and is the CEO of the Long-Term Stock Exchange. Besides traveling as a speaker, Rice helps encourage lean startup meetups, which now happen across the globe. He also serves on the board of directors for Code of America, as well as advisory boards for multiple venture capital firms and startups. This has been a book review of The Lean Startup. We are Accessory to Success. There have been links uh, mentioned for other books in this audio recording, and there's links to them in the blog post. You can find them all there. You can also buy the book on site. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the next review.